We are live. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's meeting. Uh, we are doing a hybrid meeting tonight. Normally, we would start with Committee of the Whole. Uh, but tonight we do have a couple of items that uh, we must deal with urgently. And so we are going to begin as a special city council. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have tonight uh, helping us to clerk, Deputy Clerk Chris Gauthier, uh, providing uh, clerking services tonight along with uh, Julia Sippel from the uh, clerk's office. And please note again that Committee of the Whole uh, operations will begin immediately following this special yes. council meeting. So members, are there in, anyone who has a declaration of pecuniary interest that needs to make regarding the items appearing on the special city council agenda? Seeing no raised hands. So we have no proclamations. Uh, there are no delegations and there are no items for consideration. And there is one urgent report. And Councillor Martin, it's my understanding you have the motion. Would you please read and state your seconder? Thank you. I move second by Councillor McCurry. That report number 2023-241, transfer payment agreement, safe start agreement, phase four munis municipal transit funding be received and be that the director of finance city treasurer be designated as the authorized representative with signing authority on behalf of the city for the purposes of sections 4.2, execution of amending agreements of the safe start agreement, uh, phase four transit funding transfer payment agreement and see that the city clerk be directed to place transfer payment agreement for the sale for, for the safe start agreement phase four municipal transit funding agreement between his majesty the king in right of ontario and the corporation and city of Brantford on a signing bylaw for execution by the mayor and clerk thank you <clears throat> any discussion <laughs> might just indicate for the viewing audience that uh, the reason for the urgency is that uh, this is an agreement that will provide us funding for COVID related expenses, primarily transit related from 2022, but the province requires an agreement be in place and bylawed by March 17th. So in order to receive these monies, we had to deal with it tonight. So with that, Mr. Acting Clerk, if you please take the vote. Item 6.1 carries unanimously on a recorded vote. Members of council vote in favor are as follows. Councillors Solvin, Sles McCreary, Van Toborg, Samuel Hunt, Marn, Caputo, Socoli, and Mayor Davis. So we'll move to the second item that's on tonight's agenda. It's a resolution. And uh, this resolution is in respect to a tentative settlement with the Amalgamated Transit Union Conventional Transit Local 685 for covering the collective uh, period, the collective bargaining period for January 1st, 2022, December 31st, 2025. Before I call for the mover and seconder, I'd like to uh, just say some words of praise for the city negotiating team. This has been in place for some period of time. We've had staffing changes, and I think the, the negotiating team has done an excellent job. And also, we do have uh, with us tonight Johnny Haggith and Kelly Eden, and they are part of the. They are the ATU representatives who were involved in the negotiating. They're here tonight to, I believe, show their support. And I really want to thank them and your members for agreeing to get this worked out. And I hope it's a good harbinger for what we can do in the future working together. So thank you very much for being here tonight. So with that, I'm going to ask Councillor Hunt if you would please. Uh, Move the motion, read it, and state your seconder. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Samwell, that the settlement reached between the Corporation of the City of Brantford and the Amalgamated Transit Union ATU Conventional Transit Local 685 for renewal of the collective agreement to cover the period of January 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2025 be ratified. Great. Any discussion? Seeing none. Mr. Acting Clerk, would you please take the vote? Uh, 
Item 7.1 carries unanimously on recorded votes. Members of council voting in favor are as follows. Councillors Solvin, Sles McCreary, Van Toborg, Samuel Hunt, Martin Caputo, Socoli, and Mayor Davis. All right, so we have no notice of motion for the on the agenda this evening, but we do now need to move into bylaws to uh, approve what it is that we just decided. And Councillor Caputo, I understand you have the motion for first and second reading of the necessary bylaws. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by my war mate, John Sluss, that leave be given to the mover and seconder to introduce the following bylaw for first and second reading. 35-2023 bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the City of Brantford with respect to the special meeting held on March 7th, 2023. 36-2023 Bylaw to authorize the execution of agreements individually dated and listed on Schedule A attached here to transfer payment agreement for the safe restart agreement phase four municipal transit funding agreement between His Majesty the King in Right of Ontario and the Corporation of the City of Brantford 2023-241 Special City Council 07 030723. So any discussion? Seeing none, um, your acting clerk, would you please take the vote? The first and second reading of all bylaws carries unanimously on recorded votes. Members of council voting in favor are as follows. Councillors Solvin, Sles McCreary, Van Toborg, Samuel Hunt, Martin Caputo, Socoli, and Mayor Davis. All right, Councillor Sullivan, I believe you have the resolution or motion for third reading. Thank you, Mayor Davis. Uh, this obviously I'm bringing forth uh, with my ward mate, uh, Councillor Sicoli, as my seconder, that all bylaws having been read at first and second reading be taken and was read a third time and be finally passed and signed by the mayor and clerk. All right. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Acting Clerk, would you please take the vote? The third and final reading of all bylaws carries unanimously on recorded votes. Members of council voting in favor are as follows. Councillor Solvin, Sles, McCreary, Van Tilburg, Sam Wall, Hunt, Martin Caputo, Socoli, and Mayor Davis. All right, so the uh, special city council is now adjourned as we've completed our business. And we'll just take a moment's pause before we reconvene as committee of the whole. All right, so we're reconvening as Committee of the Whole Operations. And I would ask if you please stand if you're able as I read the invocation to officially start the meeting. As we come together today, we recognize the great responsibilities laid upon us. Our council will always strive to understand the needs of the people we serve and to use power wisely and well. Our purpose is to establish and maintain a city of prosperity and righteousness where freedom prevails and where justice rules. Let us also not forget those who've served our community who are no longer with us. So we must continue to do the work that we are doing tonight in their memory. Thank you very much. Please be seated. So the roll call has already been taken. 
And we do have another member of the clerking staff that's uh, helping us tonight, Emma Books. Thank you very much, Emma. And I think we still have Julia behind us. So we now deal with declarations of conflict of interest. Councillor uh, Sicoli, I understand you have a conflict on one of the items. Yes, I have a conflict on item 6.1.3. One of the proposed changes uh, impacts a, an apartment building that I manage. Uh, any other members uh, have a pecuniary interest they need to declare regarding the items on tonight's agenda? Seeing no raised hands, we'll move right into determining which items we want separate for discussion purposes. So we do have 6.1.3, the uh, housekeeping traffic and parking control bylaws separated because of Councillor Sicoli's conflict. What other separations would the members like? Okay, I'll start over here. Councillor Hunt. 6.1.8. That's the potential alternative sites. Okay. Okay, Councillor Martin, did you have your hand up? Yes, uh, 6.1.1, the tree protection and maintenance. Thank you. Councillor Sicoli? Uh, 6.1.4, operational services policy amendments. Any other? Yes, Councillor Van Tilburg. 6.1.2. Safa Road. Councilor McCurry. No. Okay. All right. So we have 6.1.1, 6.1.2, 6.1.3, 6.1.4, .1 and 6.1.8. So, Councilor Caputo, could you please move the motion to approve all items that have not been separated for discussion purposes? Thank you. Moved by myself, seconded by my ward mate, Councillor Sless, that all items contained for consideration consent 6.1 and 6.2, not separated for discussion purposes, be approved. Right before I call the vote, uh, Emma, would you please read out the title of the items that we're voting on? Absolutely. All those items that are subject to the vote are 6.1.5, standardization of traffic services, equipment, parts, and supplies, traffic services. 6.1.6, .6, Police Station Task Force Report. 6.1.7, Vision Zero Road Safety Committee Report. 6.2.1, 2022 Annual Summary Report for the City of Brantford Water System. 6.2.2, .2, Wastewater Operations 2022 Annual Summary Report. 6.2.3, Sport Tourism Strategy 2022 Annual Status Update. 6.2.4, the Special Committee of the Whole Minutes of January 31st. All right, sorry, I forgot to ask 6.1.7 be separated. You take that off the list. Okay. All right, if you please take the vote. Okay, and that item carried uh, unanimous, unanimously. All those voting in favor, Councillor Samwell, Councillor McCreary, Sless, Sullivan, Van Tilborg, Hunt, Martin, Caputo, Sequoli, and Mayor Davis. All right, so we'll move into the items that have been separated. The first is 6.1.1, the City Tree Protection Maintenance Practices. Councillor Martin, you asked for this to be separated. Yes, thank you. Um, on page nine, there's a replacement values by diameter at breast height chart, and the the number of trees to be replaced uh, seems excessive to me. And I was wondering if, if someone on staff uh, can answer, are we looking at, for very large trees, they might be at end of life, and we're asking somebody to plant 10 trees to, to replace it, even though it's possibly going to die anyways. Was that taken into consideration? Through Mayor Davis, uh, yes, Councilor Martin, Forestry would review that if the tree is going to, is end of life, we would remove it and not require that uh, that payback or planting back, I guess. Okay, and these are mostly boulevard trees, so if a tree is 91 centimeters at chest height, it's, it's probably getting too big for the street anyway. We would review it in terms of uh, the impacts on the assets around it as well. You know, at that point, we may have some heaving of sidewalks, et cetera, so... Yeah, exactly. We would see what the impacts are if the tree does get that big in our boulevards. Um, we aren't planting those massive trees anymore. 
Um, so if there is something like that, forestry would have that review first. And that's why that policy does speak to having some authority, delegated authority for, for the GM to remove those when needed. Okay. And some of the trees on our boulevards are ones that we don't plant anymore because they're exceptionally messy. If it's one of those trees, do we still require the replacement trees? Uh, through the through Mayor Davis, uh, Councilor Martin, we, we're probably not going to be looking at that replacement if it's something that is no longer within our planting requirements in terms of what kind of species of trees we're planting. Um, we've had instances where there may be some health issues, et cetera, based around those those trees. And uh, it's, it's mm -hmm. probably best that we do remove those. Um, so that's how we'd be moving forward with that. Okay, thank you. Councilor McCurry. Mayor, thank you. Through you to staff. Um, Indy, um, have we given thought to, um, to uh, bringing the uh, removal of stumps in-house to do with our own forces? Through you, Mayor Davis, that's right, Councillor McCrew. We are working on that. We're we're undertaking the the value add, um, and then moving into budgets into twenty four. You may see something there uh, in terms of what that program does look like. Um, at the moment, we're inventorying where the stumps are, undertaking where like how um, in terms of how our forces can actually get there. Is there gaps in in that matter? So, um, yes, short answer is yes. We are looking into that. Members of council hear quite often about the locations. If you need a little help, but just ask. Yes, please um, send them over. <laughs> do you know what the length of time that we're taking to get to a stump after removal? Yeah. Rick? Two to three years. I'm getting two to three years. Yeah, thank you. Um, is there a dollar value methodology to determine the value of a street tree? Can do that. Other than for its forestry value? Through the chair, Gagan Batra, manager of business support and sustainability, um, we have used a, an average calculation of $500 per tree. Okay. Um, there may be there may be an industry standard for that. Um, and lastly, if you go to the list of species in Appendix A, um, could, you, could you tell us the reason for the appendix? Are these trees that we were we're no longer planning to plant in the urban forest. Poplar, willow, Manitoba maple, those dreaded crab apples, pears, Chinese elm, some ashes. Through the chair, um, this is a list of uh, trees that are no longer being planted, and this is going to be updated on an ongoing basis. Okay. Um, we have a number of trees, particularly along Park Road North, which are, I think, the Gladitsia species variety, not the cultivars, which produce um, thorns uh, the size of your finger and pods the size of your hand. Um, and we've had some concern about some of those. Could you say what our policy will be with respect to removal of those materials? Through you, Mayor Davis, uh, it's Councillor McCurry, just, I guess, going back to Councillor Martin's uh, question, we would look at that on a safety uh, aspect of, of the community and uh, determine if that needs to be removed at that time, or depending on the health of the tree itself, we may, we may look to remove that. And we do require residents to perform work on our behalf with respect to the urban forest, as we do with sidewalks. Um, has there been any thought given to future plantings of things like, um, well, I guess honey locust, which produces a very small leaf and which drives residents crazy trying to uh, remove them from their lawns? Through Mayor Davis, so we can review that. We know that we do have um, an instance where we do uh, in larger parks, we have an abundance of leaves dropping and that could uh, lead to blowing into neighborhoods and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, so if there is, is if there's a small broadleaf uh, plant, we could definitely look into our listing here and speak to our forestry staff as to what's appropriate. Um, also, um, um, do you ever have that moment when you're about to say something and it goes right out of your head? All the time. Thank, thank you for that. That was my final question. Yeah. All right, so, yeah, it's time's up. <laughs> um, any other questions? Seeing none, 
Emmett, please take the vote. Uh, city tree protection and maintenance practices carried unanimously. All those voting in favor are councillors Samwell, McCreary, Sless, Sullivan, Van Tilborg, Hunt, Martin, Caputo, Sicoli, and Mayor Davis. All right, we'll move on to the next item, which is item 6.1.2, the Aber Road Bridge Rehabilitation Update. Councillor Van Tilborg, you can lead off on this. Oh, I don't know if I've ever been excited to, to know that a bridge is going to get work done, but uh, often constituents from all across the city are asking about what's happening there and when. So uh, obviously we're going to have an answer for them. And of course, with that comes a bit of an inconvenience, but I am, I am looking forward to this and uh, as are many people. My question is regarding in the resolution and the recommendation C, item number three, it says $220,000 from the water and related reserve funds. Is that the, um, the rate payers that uh, you know, pay for the water usage? Is that where that money's coming from? Through the chair to you, Councillor Van Tilborg, Jennifer Elliott, Director of Engineering Services. Yes, water, the water reserves does come from rate funded. Okay, so just to explain, well, how is that related to building on the bridge, the water money's being used and how we came to that figure? Through the chair to you, Councillor, um, we are doing some water main upgrades with this project as a water main comes down Ava Road and ties into Brant Avenue. So these funds are to support the water main upgrades. Thank you. You're that welcome. is the answer I needed. You're welcome. Councillor Sless. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, it's good to see this here, and it's good to see that it's happening. Uh, when is it happening? Is it starting in May? Through the chair to you, Councillor Celeste, uh, the anticipated construction is set to start in May. Okay. And uh, for the folks that are watching, may not understand, there was two options presented to, to do this work. One would take two building seasons uh, and, and would require... Um, about 1.7 million, if I, if I remember the numbers correctly, more to do it over two building periods, but it would allow us to keep a lane open during construction, which in itself is inherently a problem because then you're trying to build things in pieces and then you have to make those pieces fit together, which um, it challenges the integrity of what you're building and, and the longevity of what you're building. So if we take all the pain all at once, we shut down the bridge completely, and we can do it in, I believe it was 27 weeks. Um, I'm not sure how they can tell you exactly it's going to be 27 weeks. If it rains for three weeks in a row, it's probably going to take 30 weeks. But given all of that, uh, there's money savings. There's a better product at the end. The hurt takes a little longer in one season, and it's done. So uh, the, the folks at Homedale ha have tolerated a lot this last uh, this last building season. They had... Uh, basically half shut off from, from the city and, and had to kind of find their way around. Um, if I remember your map correctly, and we talked about this earlier, uh, if someone's coming in from Paris down Paris Road, they can't cross the bridge, but they can access Terrace Hill to get to the downtown area. If they're coming out of Homedale, their best bet is to come up St. Paul as opposed to coming up Parkside. If they come up Parkside, can they exit onto Brant Avenue? Through the chair to you, Councillor Sless, if vehicular traffic is coming up Parkside Drive, they would be able to turn left onto Ava Road to progress up until Hardy Road. They would not be able to access the bridge. Okay, well, Councillor Caputo and I just attended a meeting where the folks on Ava Road don't really want any more traffic. They want less. So um, hopefully they would take the uh, St. Paul, which would be a more direct route as opposed to you can't get there from here. So, okay, having said that, um, the folks can expect another disruptive summer, uh, unfortunately, but the, the pain is 27 weeks long. Uh, when it's done, we have a bridge that should last uh, outlast anybody in this room. So having said that, uh, thanks for what you're doing. And if you can start it in April, that would be even better. Uh, it will get it done sooner and we can enjoy the uh, 
being able to get around our city the way we're we're, we're used to. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Councilor McCurry. Uh, Mayor, thank you, and I'm pleased to announce that I did remember my tree question, which is no longer of any value to me. Um, Jen, uh, through you, Mayor, uh, to staff. Jen, um, could could you tell us exactly what we're doing? Are we taking down half of the bridge structure in its entirety to rebuild in its entirety at a time? Is that plan B? Through the chair to you, Councillor McCreary, the recommendation is full bridge closure, which would take the entire deck of the bridge as well as the steel girders off, leave the piers that are that are secured into the ground, and then we would fully replace the, the structure. So all that would be left is the concrete foundation that the structural steel sits on. And the piers that are in between um, the railway tracks and as well as the railway tracks in the road. All that's left is concrete at ground level. Correct. Okay. Um, was thought given to, to completely replacing that bridge at another location? Yeah, through the chair to you, Councillor McCreary. There was an EA, an environmental assessment that was done in 2009 um, that would look at alternatives. And this is the preferred alternative was to um, maintain that bridge. Okay, so other 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 solutions were uh, investigated at the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, climate and environmental implications, my favorite topic. Um, it is assumed that alternative one would result in more GHG emissions. Correct. I guess the, the short version is that that construction of this bridge will produce some climate impact, right? That is correct. Through the chair to you, Councilor McCreary. Yes, with the um, construction vehicles and all of the exhaust. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, we can be reasonably sure that construction variables such as equipment type, number of hours of operation, fuel type, etc., um, are largely diesel fumes. So it'll be coming into the atmosphere while we do this. Correct mitigated by the immediate lack of vehicles traveling over in greater numbers at the time. Through the chair to you, there would be um, a reduced number of vehicles driving over the bridge as the bridge would be closed. However, they would be finding alternate routes, so they would still be driving. Yeah, so, so the net impact is bad, bad, <laughs> right? Correct, all right. construction does have GHD Thank emissions. You. Councilor Martin. Yeah, thank you. Through you to staff. Um, looking at the picture in our report, it looks as though people coming up Parkside Drive should be able to turn right and just stay in that right lane and end up on Brand Ave without going near the bridge. Is there a reason why that's being closed? Through the chair to you, Councilor Martin, we do need to close that um, slip off, say if you were to turn right from Parkside Drive, as the there's expansion joints and the bridge decking does come into that intersection. Okay, thank you. All right, second speaking opportunity, Councilor Schloss. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. One thing I forgot, Jen, that, that I've been asked several times, the underpass coming up Brant Ave and going under the bridge, uh, it's currently closed because of, of the state of the bridge, but that, my understanding is, will be reopened once the bridge is rebuilt. Is that correct? Through the chair to you, Councillor Celeste, that is correct. That um, Ava Road slip-off will open once the bridge is replaced. I think people will be happy to hear that. Thank you. Second time, Councillor McCreary. Mayor, thank you. Through you to staff, I, I found another page of questions for you. Um, is there a staging area for the construction? Through the chair to you, Councillor McCreary, once we um, move into having all of the signage plans and the staging plans, we will identify that staging area. Not there yet. Correct. Okay. And um, there's reference to the, the attendance by Canadian National Railway personnel. That is correct. Through the chair to you, Councillor McCreary, we are, because we are working in that close proximity to the CN rail line, we do require CN flagging. So whenever we're in that vicinity, we need that flag person. So what exactly does that mean? So Somebody that, with, a, with a train railroad or train radio that can say, here it comes? That is correct. Okay. So they work with the, uh, the train engineers. Right. Okay. And um, with respect to the construction costs, we're looking for uh, $330,000 for changes to materials to expedite construction 
and increase longevity of the structure. Through the chair to you, Councilor McCreary. So that is um, a more expedited um, product of decking. It's precast concrete decking. So that speeds up the construction. So, and it also adds longevity. You don't have as many um, joints in which moisture can get in and degrade the bridge. So it's a better quality product built off site under controlled conditions. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. You're welcome. I've got a couple of questions. Um, there was previously a fiber optic cable, one of Bell's, I think, major fiber optic cable that went through the middle of the bridge. One of the delays last year was having that relocated. I assume that's been done now? Um, through, to, through to you, Mayor Davis. Um, about two weeks ago when I drove through there, Bell was still doing their final splicing at the intersection of Terrace Hill and Brant Ave. So by the time we are moving in, yes, they should be complete and completely right. vacated off the bridge. And will there continue to be, once the bridge is completed, fiber optic running through the middle of the bridge, or is this a permanent rerouting? This is the permanent rerouting. No more fiber optic will be on that bridge. All right. And the schedule, the 27-week schedule, that depends on um, CN Rail cooperating and having the various personnel in place and equipment. Uh, confident there'll be no delays by virtue of that partnership? Through you to you, Mayor Davis, we are very hopeful that there will be no further delays. We have been having excellent conversations and meetings with CN, and we're being we're hoping that they will address our concerns quickly. Right. Yeah, and I wanted to thank you and your staff as well. This is a very important project. One, identifying the, the fact that we had a, a safety issue out there, uh, taking the corrective action to protect uh, the safety of residents, realizing that, yes, it uh, caused a great deal of inconvenience, but safety trumps convenience. And it's great to have this project done. It'll last another 50 years. And I, I don't know if you're, if you're up for it, maybe a second video out there. <laughs> We can talk. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so with that, I'll call the vote. Item 6.1.2, Ava Road Bridge Rehabilitation carried unanimously. All those voting in favor are Councillors Samwell, McCreary, Sless, Sullivan, Van Tilborg, Hunt, Martin, Caputo, Sequoli, and Mayor Davis. So now we'll move to uh, 6.1.3. This is a housekeeping resolution uh, to fine tune and tweak our traffic and parking control bylaws. It's separated because of Councillor Sicoli's conflict. Any discussion? Saying none, I don't know if you please take the vote. Thank you. Item 6.1.3, housekeeping, traffic, and parking control bylaws carried unanimously on a recorded vote. All those voting in favor, Councillor Samwell, McCreary, Sless, Sullivan, Van Tilborg, Hunt, Martin, Caputo, Mayor Davis, noting Councillor Sicoli's conflict. All right, we'll move to 6.1.4. This is the operational services policy am amendments. Councillor Sicoli, you asked for this to be separated. I did, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And through you uh, to staff, I do have a question. I wanna make sure that I'm interpreting this property, uh, properly. Um, in the report, section nine, 9.1, traffic calming, Am I interpreting this correctly that um, from here on out in order to um, implement any traffic calming measures within a neighborhood that we're going to um, have this requirement before us that we must post a reduced speed limit for at least one year before any traffic calming measures such as a stop sign will be considered? Good evening through uh, the chair, David Ferguson, manager of uh, traffic services. So the traffic calming section uh, is primarily a, a change in wording related to the collector roads. Um, just making sure that we identify that for traffic calming, it's one one lane each direction 
in some cases, collectors can be four lanes. So we obviously want to clarify that. And then the, the second part to that is that uh, the one year must pass following a posted speed limit reduction before traffic calming would be considered. So that is something that is included. This, of course, is also uh, separate from the neighborhood reviews that many of the councillors are familiar with. That's obviously a different process. So is it currently in the policy stated this way? That's part of the, the recommendation of this report is adding that. So I am interpreting this correctly. Correct. Yes. Okay. So if I have a, a neighborhood that's all up in arms and they call me and, and they feel that they would benefit from a stop sign and I want to bring that forward to council, I would not be able to do that until we've reduced the speed limit for one year. So through the chair, uh, based on the policy, yes, obviously councillors have the ability to bring forward resolutions and notices of motions. So that would be a decision of council. Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Mayor, I'd like this to be, um, the items to be separated within the motion. Thank you. Each one of them separate? Uh, Specifically, item B I. Okay. So just B I. Yeah. Okay. Um, so before we move into the voting, would someone be, uh, actually, I think I committed an error. Councillor Sicoli, can you put a motion to place all separate items on? The <laughs> you floor? know, I thought yeah. so, but who am I? Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Sullivan, uh, that all items for consideration slash consent 6.1 and 6.2 separated for discussion purposes be approved. Right. Okay. So we've got that on the floor. <laughs> yeah. I'm not voting on now. Yeah. Okay. So let's move to take the vote on item uh, B I. That's Uh, so item B, I lost on a tie vote. Okay. All right, let's now uh, take the vote on the balance of the items. Uh, thank you, all other items. Um, I Regard, disregarding item B, I carried on a recorded vote. All those voting in favor are Councillor Samwell, Van Tilburg, Carpenter, Hunt, McCreary, Martin, Slash, Caputo, Sullivan, Sequoli, and Mayor Davis. Point of order. She listed Councillor Carpenter as voting when he's not here. Hmm. Sorry, Ms. Lee. Noted, thank you. All right. Thank you for that assistance, Councillor Martin. Uh, so the next item is 6.1.7, Vision Zero Road Safety Committee report. Uh, I think I asked for it to be separated. I did so just uh, so that uh, people are aware <clears throat> uh, the significance of one of the decisions that are being made in that report. And it has to do with one of the issues that I think all of us heard most frequently at the doorstep during the election, and that was speeding. And many of us uh, would have told residents that uh, there is a form of speed control, remote speed control cameras that will be coming in. And there is a decision in here that's a necessary foundation for a city implementing a remote speed control system and the emplacement of cameras. And that is you have to, under provincial legislation, designate community safety zones. And that gives you the legal authority to install the cameras. We have in here, I think, 10 community safety uh, zones on major streets and you can 
go to the website for tonight's agenda and you can see the streets and there's also 16 other um, more minor streets that uh, relate to uh, schools and are going to be designated for school safety purposes. So it's a great uh, uh, step forward and hopefully we will soon see speed control cameras. And thank you staff and the consultant for completing that report in a timely manner so we can try and get those cameras in place this year. Councilor McCurry. Mayor, thank you for bringing that up. And Ward 3 residents will be happy to know that Fairview between Wayne and West is on the list. Uh, Powerline Road is on the list. Uh, Grand and Wood Street are on the supplementary list. Okay, any other discussion? Seeing none, Emma, if you please take the vote. Thank you. Item 6.1.7 carried unanimously. All those voting in favor are Councillors Samuel McCurry, Sless, Sullivan, Van Tilborg, Hunt, Martin Caputo, Socoli, and Mayor Davis. All right, so we'll move to the last item that's been separated for discussion purposes before we get to resolutions. That's 6.1.8, the potential alternative sites for community garden and greenhouse. Councillor Hunt, you asked for it to be separated. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, through you to staff, um, I wanted to address the uh, $400,000 price tag that's on there. Um, and uh, I, I know I've already got an answer to my question, but for the uh, viewing public, um, if staff could address what needs to be done, this is not specifically related to the actual greenhouse. Through the chair to you, Councillor Hunt, um, the $400,000 price tag is um, the current estimation for the planting beds, um, pathways, um, driveway access, and um, storage shed area, and some drainage in the in the back end of the park because there it does hold water at that back corner. So um, my understanding is that. The, the drainage is actually quite expensive. Um, uh, and, I, and I do know from constituents who live in that area that uh, that end of the park um, is swampy at best. Um, so that it's a, it's a fair assumption that there's a, a good chunk of that $400,000, which is addressing the, the drainage issue in that area of the park. A, a, a good portion of it, yes, for catch basins, potential catch basins, piping coming up to the parking lot area to catch um, any of that drainage as well as potential. Like we need to study it as well, go through detailed design. There could be some infiltration galleries that we need to place in there. Um, however, asphalt as well and, and planting beds will also cost um, a portion of this $400,000. Okay, thank you. Okay. and. Um, I've still got a few minutes. The um, I just uh, also I wanted to I really want to put out there. Um, I know that there are some members of Equal Ground here today that that this decision um, or this process has been a very long one for this organization. They went out and they got a Trillium Foundation grant. Um, they've hired a, a, a coordinator to do programming. Um, we, through decisions of council, they've, they've really gone through some pretty significant delays. Um, this Greenhouse and Learning Centre is actually going to be delayed um, by one year um, if we approve the, uh, the resolution that's um, before us today because they're not going to have their Greenhouse and Learning Centre for this season. So it's going to go into um, another year. And I just think everybody needs to be aware of this is a volunteer organization and the amount of work that they did um, to make this project happen and then to be able to pivot um, a, a number of times. Also, I, I do know as a past chair of the Trillium Foundation that getting a grant is not an easy thing to do. Um, so I commend you on that, um, but also being able to work with the Trillium Foundation on the changes that have been necessitated by this as well. So. Um, just want to put that uh, that out there. So thank you for that. Councillor Samuel. 
Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I do have a question for staff. I believe it would be Indy. Um, first, I want to thank you for the report that you've uh, brought forward for us to look at today. I just had a couple of questions that maybe will help with my decision tonight, as well as um, for the public watching at home. Could you tell me if there was a reason identified as to why the greenhouse project could not go into Earl Hague? And also, what would the cost have been to us if it had gone into Earl Hague as planned? Thank you. Through you, Mayor Davis, uh, to Councillor Sam. Also, there's a resolution passed for us, or the in terms of the report being referred for alternate locations. So that's that reason why we're bringing that report. Um, we did have a recommendation now of, of an alternate location for Council to debate and and approve. Um, and in regards to the cost, um, staying at Earl Hag, I, I believe it would have been the waiving of the fees cost to the city, maybe some in-kind services from staff in terms of um, inspections or being on site for the greenhouse, but the material and the build would have been covered by that, uh, that grant. Thank you. So it's just the referral from um, council then that was the reason why it couldn't go into Earl Hag at this time. Through Mayor Davis, yes, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Through you to staff, I guess I missed it in the report. What's the reason for the one-year delay in the greenhouse being erected? Through you, Mayor Davis. Uh, so Councillor Martin, there's just a delay because we do have to run that through the site plan process. Now, I can't say that um, it would be a full year uh, if we can run that through our site plan control um fairly quickly it's a minor minor project that's why we do want to separate the two the gardens and the park so that we can get that going as soon as we can um and in parallel run the greenhouse so it may be sooner than that okay um is there a chance the greenhouse will be installed in time to still qualify for the grant through you mayor davis so the the material this is this is the situation in terms of for equal grounds is that some of the material is already being purchased from the approval in July, uh, when the grant was, uh, I think they had received the grants funding uh, sometime in around that February area. Um, so they began procuring uh, the materials for the greenhouse. Um, so they will uh, continue to procure that materials. And that's why one of the recommendations to be able to enter into any or certain agreements in terms of utilizing that uh, purchase of material that was made through the grant so that we can utilize that. Now the funding that we have in terms of the city is doing is for foundations and and the, the what the base would be for the for the greenhouse, but the build would be based on the material bought through the grant. Okay, thank you. Councillor Van Tilburg. <laughs> what a score for Ward 4. Um, four hundred thousand dollars investment into the Woodman area and the community gets a a, a new garden and uh in a greenhouse. That's actually quite awesome. A lot of money, but it's awesome. And uh, and for us in Ward 5, where that garden was set up a number of years ago, um, there will be a garden still there. For how long, we don't know. They all operate on limited time. So we, nobody has a forever place when you're on city property. So there will be a place. Um, the difference here is that there was a greenhouse that was going to go into Earl Hague and uh, there was a motion to waive the fees. I don't think that motion actually ever came off the table. It was a referral. So hopefully uh, this includes waiving those fees, which I don't think exists with the new changes to site plan. So that $3,200 was gone. And basically if it had that stayed at Earl Hague, it would have cost virtually nothing because everything was done with a grant and we it would be happening this year. The will of council was to not have it at Earl Hague after all the work and the legwork had been done and to move it to this other area. So they get it. It's $400,000. Um, some people would believe that that's more secure in the future. You never know. Um, that's what when volunteers and communities operate on city property, you sign a lease and that lease is renewable over and over again. And therefore, at any other will of council, things can change. That's just how things are. Um, I know Equal Grounds has been involved in this transition process. I know it was a bit of a shock when it came because nobody saw this coming because there was no plan behind the resolution when it first came forward. In fact, there remains no plan um, on why. We really don't know why and we've not been told why. We've just been, basically, it was just, you, you can't be there and it's going to move. 
So with that, you can't be there and it's going to move. It's $400,000 of taxpayer money being used to set up something that in theory should be more secure for the long run. So I hope that works out well for you. Um, I hope that works well for the community. And I hope that uh, if there is even more information that the taxpayers wish to know that feel free to ask. Councilor McCurry. Mayor, thank you and through you to staff. Um, to come back to the question regarding site plan approval, um, could you remind me who it is and what building they've resided in these folks that uh, look after site plan approval? Thank you, Mayor Davis. So the city will undertake that. It's part of our department. Uh, um, but we have been in discussions with building and, and planning already just to ensure that uh, the transition would be smooth if, if approved. So we have the basis for a site plan in front of us here with respect to the conceptual plan. Uh, through you, Mayor Davis, it's a conceptual plan and the site plan would only be the greenhouse building because that initiates the site plan requirement is the building. Now, if the building wasn't there, we would not be going through site plan for a city park. And this, the, the dimensions of the building are more than 10 by 10, right? Yes. So, so uh, more than more than our, our legal requirement, well, exceeding our requirement, yes. I guess. Um, so how long will it take to produce the site plan? Dear Mayor Davis, so we're we'll be working on that right after the approval. Um, I know Eco Grounds is eager to know what happens tonight in terms of the agreements and the discussion they can then have with the funder. Um, mm -hmm. They are they're waiting for for a direction as well in terms of any extensions that might be needed to the grant um, since since the delay from the referral. Uh, so we'd be getting that work done. The shop drawings are already complete in terms of the the uh, Eco Grounds builder. Everything is there in place. The only thing is if we don't get it in time, the delay a little bit expanding on Councillor Martin's question is that we may miss the growing season. And so that's why it would come into play in a year's time, but the build could could certainly uh, be sooner than that. Now, with respect to, you said final approval for what's before us tonight. Uh, so if we were to advance that by way of a special council sooner than the end of this month, that would, allow you more time and we'd actually have a shot at being in business this year? Dear Mayor Davis, I, I'd have to look at uh, in terms of what two weeks may get us in terms of our, our work. We are very, very, like move, moving very, very well in the design side of the park. Um, so any time would be helpful to to us to advance this project. So the, but the eventual design of the park could accommodate a, a, perhaps a more arbitrary location of the greenhouse uh, the park could then be designed around the location, which could then advance to the site plan process and get us a lot closer to completion. Yes, through you, Mayor Davis. So we situated that based on the setbacks required. So then even that, we wouldn't have to go into any variances and whatnot. Um, so that's why there's a really, if you look, there's a red box there. Mm -hmm. We're really limited to where we'd like to be so that we avoid some of those um, processes and so that we can move this forward. Uh, a little bit faster. Have the equal ground folks been taken to the site to discuss? Do you Mayor Davis? So I've, I've I know been, there was a, there was a letter of endorsement, right? Yes, yes, that's correct. Um, I've been in discussions with Eco Ground. They have visited the site. They've had some issues and concerns that they voiced. Uh, we've been working together on those, um, and and we did receive the letter of support after having those discussions. Okay, so there is a roadmap to get this done more quickly, then. That's right. Yeah, thank you. All right, seeing all the speakers, Emily, would you please uh, take the vote on this? Uh, thank you. Item 6.1.8, potential alternative sites for a community garden and greenhouse carried on a recorded vote of eight to two. All those voting in favor are Councillors Hunt, McCreary, Martin, Sless, Caputo, Sullivan, Sicoli, Mayor Davis. Those opposed, Councillors Van Tilborg and Samwell. Hey, I will now do you move into resolutions. And we have two tonight. We'll go to 7.1, splash pads, Councillor Sullivan, if you please 
Move your resolution, uh, confirm your seconder, and read your resolution. Thank you, Mary Davis. Um, seconded by my ward mate, Councillor Sicoli. Uh, whereas the City of Brantford's 20, 2018 Parks and Recreation Master Plan recommends the development of additional splash, splash pads in the city parks, both smaller neighborhood community facilities within short walking distances for neighbors neighborhoods, with many young children in large drive to destination facilities in larger multi-use parks, and whereas splash pads can provide relief for residents during the summer season, and specifically when uh, there are heat warnings. And whereas splash pads are located at 70 Anderson, Bridal Path Park, Harmony Square, Mohawk Park, Tudela Park, uh, noting that not all wards currently have splash pads. Now that therefore be it resolved that the city that city staff investigate appropriate and accessible locations for neighborhood splash pads in all wards and report back in quarter two of 2023 on the potential locations that can be added to the 2024 capital budget. May I speak to this too? Absolutely. So one thing I've noticed, especially coming out of COVID, a lot of these uh, units that are out there, it's an extra $100, $150 a month in the summer to have air conditioning in their units. And some of these areas just can't afford that. I think it's it's vital that we give them places where they can cool. And then that we have other areas like Princess Anne Park, for example, where that neighborhood doesn't have a splash pad at all. And I just think it's something that the neighborhood deserves. Thank you. Councilor Sikoli. Yes, thank you. Pleased uh, with my ward mate, uh, Councillor Sullivan, for bringing this forward and happy to second it. Um, I will second uh, Princess Anne Park for any staff who are listening. Just plant that little seed. Um, and I'm, I'm quasi hoping that this will allow them, uh, that'll bring water to the site and allow them to have a skating rink as well for the neighborhood uh, in the summer. Um, but they, I think it's uh, an area where they desperately need that. And um, yeah, I think it's a great resolution. I look forward to seeing the report that comes back. Thank you. Councilor McCree. I, uh, I'm assuming that implicit within the resolution is the unstated uh, phrase in consultation with the word councilors. Um. I think that would, would staff safe, understand I think that'd that they'd be implicit. implicit. Yeah. yeah. Rick, can you clarify that for us? For us? Inferred. In other words, I think what the the question is: as the report's being prepared, would input be solicited from the ward councillors? Oh, through you, Mayor Davis. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you for re-asking my question. <laughs> Glad to help whenever you need it. You've had some problems tonight, so I thought I'd help you. <clears throat> Um, but I, I also want to congratulate Councillor uh, Sullivan. I think it's a great resolution. Um, having uh, six grandchildren, I know how important uh, splash pads can be to enjoying a very hot summer day with young children. And especially in this age of uh, climate change, hotter summers, sometimes so hot it's uh, really hard to use a park during the day. And this uh, will expand the use of our parks and, and better distribute, perhaps in a fair manner. Uh, splash pads for the city. So I congratulate you for bringing it forward. So I'll call the vote. Thank you. Item 7.1, splash pads carried unanimously on a recorded vote. All those voting in favors are Councillors Samwell, uh, McCreary, Sless, Sullivan, Van Tilburg, Hunt, Martin, Caputo, Sicoli, and Mayor Davis. All right, so we'll move to the second resolution, a new sports entertainment facility, Councillor McCreary. Mayor, thank you very much. And the seconder is my ward mate, Councillor Greg Martin. Uh, the resolution reads as follows, whereas on February 7, the City of Bradford Council approved a report term sheet for OHL team agreement for Bradford Civic Center, and whereas the term sheet between the city and the Bulldogs hockey club states that the city is to consider throughout this term a future development of a new sports and entertainment facility capable of seating 5,000 spectators for hockey games and capable of being a home arena for an OHL franchise. And whereas there's been tremendous positive community support to host an, OH an OHL team, not NHL, OHL uh, later maybe, uh, through the sale of nearly 2,400 season memberships for the Bradford Bulldogs. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the staff be directed to develop a plan that includes a recommended location, cost estimates, including capital and operating, 
a financing plan and delivery timetables of a new sports and entertainment facility for the city of Bradford and report back no later than December 31st, 2023. And B, the staff be directed to engage and retain appropriate professional services, including external sport facility consultants to create the plan referenced in Clause A and to fund these costs estimated to be $200,000 from the casino legacy reserve. Uh, and Mayor, I'll, I'll comment uh, ever so briefly on this. As part of our agreement, we said we would undertake this action. And um, I would hope that everybody tonight uh, in a unanimous vote would support this. We've seen the tremendous response of our community uh, to embrace OHL hockey once again, which has been absent low these many decades from the Civic Center. Uh, the Civic Center has given us yeoman service and um, it's not really capable of supporting the class and caliber of hockey that OHL uh, will provide this community. Um, recommended location will be something that's considered, certainly cost estimates, including uh, our cost to operate. And uh, we'd also be looking at uh, potential partnerships with the hockey club and perhaps with third party investors who might be looking at doing additional things on the same site. Uh, delivery timetable. Well, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've got a three year arrangement with Bulldogs and three one year options. Uh, so time is not unlimited, and, and that's why we want to advance this during 2023, so we can see exactly what question uh, to put towards this community um, with respect to whether or not the community thinks this is a worthwhile endeavor for us to be undertaking, and whether um, this uh, council will uh, will support such a plan. Um, the time frame to produce a hockey arena is pretty lengthy, I would think. Uh, we'd probably be lucky to to have construction completed by the end of our third year option if we undertake this study and we come to some agreement in 2024 that would see us advance this project. Um, it's an opportunity for the city to, um, to recognize its standing in the Ontario community. Uh, we have a deficit with respect to facilities for some types of events, other sports like lacrosse, um, and um, this could be um, a watershed event for the city of Bradford. And um, for those who would care to reference that, let me assure those uh, that uh, we will not be instructing the consultant to house this in the beautiful third ward. Again, thank you to members of council. I would appreciate your full support in making this unanimous tonight. Uh, I know the community's watching. I know the Bulldogs are watching and they're likely watching us in the OHL tonight as well. All eyes on Bradford. Yes, Councillor Caputo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, th I think this is fantastic. I think uh, putting something together like this certainly is something that the city needs. It's an opportunity for us to be able to not only attract the Bulldogs, but to attract a lot of events that come through here. My only question is I'm wondering whether or not we're 5,000 seats is enough. I'm sure we'll have some input given to us and, and that'll come through from the um, consultants, but living in London for as many years as I did and when they decided to build the uh, the Budweiser Gardens downtown, I think if they had to go back to council today, they probably would have built that arena with 15,000 seats and not 9,200. Um, I think uh, we have an opportunity here to do some great things with hockey and with everything else. Um, just going back last year, if you, you look at game seven last year for the Bulldogs in their championship game, they put 12,000 people at Cops. So, uh, and if you go back four years ago, uh, they probably did the exact same thing. And if history repeats itself, which it usually does, the Hamilton Bulldogs will be hoisting a OHL championship trophy in our town. So uh, just a thought process to think that maybe we need to make it a little bigger than making it smaller. Thanks. Councillor Sullivan. Thank you, Mayor Davis, through you. Um, I too will be supporting this. Um, the people of Brantford have been asking us to create more revenue here so we could have uh, property tax easements in the future. And I think this is the perfect opportunity to bring in other venues like concerts and wrestling matches and whatever else that we can fill the place with. Uh, I too, like Councillor Caputo, don't think 5,000 is enough. I think maybe we should be looking somewhere in the eight to 9,000 range. And, uh, but I'll leave that to the, the beautiful staff to figure out. Thank you. Councilor Van Tilburg. And just a question, would this resolution as it's written be limiting it to 5,000? 
Through you, Mayor Davis. Uh, no, Councillor Van Der Schelt. That's just, I believe, what was Councillor Van Tilburg. The big guy's gone. <laughs> I'm the littler <laughs> Dutch guy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, brain fog. Um, <laughs> the uh, No, the agreement, I believe the term just had that number in there, the 5,000, but uh, with the help of our uh, the consulting group that we're trying to put together, we would look at what the actual requirement would be. We'd also see um, how the numbers are when the season starts, and and that would probably play into it as well. So, absolutely, um, and I think you're 100 percent correct. Uh, we have been down this path before on a couple different periods of time, both pre-existing my terms and during my terms were um, investigations into potential expansion of either the civic center or building a new arena have come up. Uh, we know that those are quite costly endeavors, but the biggest change will be very much affected by the biggest change currently happening at the civic center. And that is the Bulldogs being there and people buying tickets and showing up. And I believe that when we see as this progresses and we see the, the strength of the community in that arena, that's going to give us all the answers that we need, whether we can sustain this or not, and it will probably give us that public uh, public opinion that will move the this to a priority decision for us in the future. Uh, we've never really had that before. In other words, we've had what is essentially a, I would call it almost a pipe dream. Uh, we don't have a pipe dream this time. We've got the real deal. We've got it happening here. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, and that arena, you know, could land anywhere. Again, not necessarily in the fifth ward, but maybe in the fifth ward. We don't know. Um, but I do know that having this discussion at this time under these circumstances couldn't be any better. And I really want to thank the mayor because it was sometime back around Christmas time when they were having the negotiations about a team. He saw the vision of this is the catalyst in order to uh, bring forward a new arena. I mean, that was on his mind from the get-go. New arena, better arena, bigger arena um, in order to sustain OHL hockey. So uh, again, where we are, happy to support this one. Yeah, I guess I can't let it go without saying a few words. But, uh, you know, I also want to speak up for uh, for our fine Civic Center and the the investment that we're making in order to bring the team here um, is probably going to add at least another maybe 10 to 20 years of the life of the building. So I'm hoping that as part of this, we can determine how it is that uh, we can have the two buildings because we also have a, a shortage of ice in our community. Uh, we know we've got uh, Lions Park, a facility there that uh, probably is now long in the tooth and needs to be replaced at some point. Maybe this can all be worked into it so that uh, the end result is hopefully uh, an OHL team here permanently, and but also uh, in respect to arenas and ice services, uh, a community that is uh, better equipped to deal with the demand that's there. And yes, in order to keep an OHL team here long term, the Civic Center uh, gets them here, but a Civic Center, even with the money we're putting into it, doesn't keep an OHL team here long term. And so it is a necessary investment if we'd like to see an OHL team. But I quite agree with you, Councillor Van Tilburg. All of this is for naught. If we as a community do not support the team come September, and if we don't fill that arena each night, we do that, then it'll become a self-fulfilling prophecy. We will have an OHL team long-term and we will have a new arena. It depends on us, the community, and supporting the team and our building and our city. So. I'm very optimistic. We're going to see it all happen. And I thank Councillor uh, McCurry for doing this because hopefully in September, when it becomes clear we can support a team, we'll, we'll have the information in the fall that allow us to make some decisions that will demonstrate to the OHL and to the Bulldogs ownership group that we're serious about keeping them here and not just for three years. So with that, I'll call the vote. Thank you. Item 7.2, new sports and entertainment facility carried unanimously on a recorded vote. All those voting in favor are Councillors Samwell, McCreary, Sless, Sullivan, Van Tilborg, Hunt, Martin, Caputo, Sicoli, and Mayor Davis.
All right, so we'll uh, move into notices of motion, but uh, before we do that, a little unusual request, but I think I'll grant it uh, with no objections. Um, Councillor Martin's asked for an opportunity to make a few comments in relation to um, something that happened earlier this year. Yeah, it was during the estimates meeting. I was commenting about the police budget and saying that the unmet needs weren't handled properly because they're voted on as a block instead of voting on them individually. Unfortunately, a member of uh, the police staff uh, took, it, took it as a, an insult on the work that he did, even though it was not intended that way. It was more a, a shot at the, at the board. So because the comments were made at a public meeting, I felt it appropriate to, to set the record straight at a public meeting as well. So thank you very much for this time, Mr. Mayor. And uh, I appreciate All right. it. All right, let's move into notices of motion. Uh, we got three of them. Uh, Councilor McCurry, you have the first. Please read the title of your notice of motion. Mayor, thank you. Um, a review of snow clearing. Councilor Martin, yours. Sorry. Tow authority for parking. Sorry. And Councilor Sless, you got the third one. Yes, I have a road traffic calming and pedestrian crossovers. All right, uh, with that, we've completed uh, tonight's business. I uh, want to thank all staff and uh, support you provided to tonight. And we're adjourned. We're not going to be meeting next week. Next week is March break, of course. Uh, we'll be meeting in two weeks' time. Committee of the whole planning. We're adjourned.